product manufacturers and distributors, this episode is for you. Now, if you want to hear what this next generation needs most from your brand, some of this won't surprise you. We've certainly heard some of these things before. But again, why we're passing the mic to the newest generations in our industry is that some of this will surprise you. And hearing it in their words helps with the nuances of how you can solve their biggest challenges and become their preferred go-to. Now, in this episode, you'll hear five insights. Number one, how their workflow changed in 2020 when it comes to product selection. Number two, their biggest issue with websites and how you can make yours better. Number three, the best way you can inspire them with your product today. Number four, what they need most from a rep today, including some surprising insight about their preferred balance with digital tools and the humans we know and love. And finally, number five, a big opportunity for leading brands to go above and beyond and get noticed with this next generation. But before we dive in, <laughs> we have to warn you. This special episode was created to benefit our Think Lab Insider subscription members. So lucky for you, we'll be sharing the first half here on the podcast channel. But to get the full episode with all five insights, you'll have to click the link in the show notes to find out how you can become an insider. Let's get started. First up, insight number one how their workflow changed in 2020 when it comes to product selection. And really, what if that change is here to stay? So let's start with how their world shifted. Now, these interior design 30 under 30 events where all of these insights were recorded include participants that graduated as early as 2016. So some of them had more time in, as one Gen Z participant called it, the before, than other participants did. Let's hear how the pandemic affected their workflow. Usually before when I have to source material, I would run to the d and building and I would look and then look at the fabrics, floor covering, and then I will run to the tile vendors, their showrooms to look at it. But then because of pandemic, I started to look online and we all know the material bank, people started to use that, that's convenient too. But I still miss going into the showroom, seeing the samples in person. And we were not really allowed to have vendor during that time to come to have presentation during pandemic. So that was something lost because when they came, we learned something new. We see the new trend, see their new product. That was really helpful. And then for me, during pandemic, I'll have to source those from the magazine, from the online website. It's less in person. It's different. That's tough. It is hard, and I know we're struggling to have a hybrid work flow. So we really tried to say one day a week, we like to call it a product parade, and we invite three to five vendors. You have an hour of anybody's time who happens to be in the office that day. Just come, show us your stuff, let's know what's new, let's chat. So that's been positive for us, but it is really hard to get in front of us designers. Because of this virtual world, we're just back-to-back -back deadlines and moving to the next thing and on this Zoom call and not in that Zoom call, and you barely get water cooler talk anymore. So it's definitely hard on us, and I don't think designers want to push vendors away because that's what we need. We're trying to do things outside of the office, like events, or we'll do specific events for our team specifically. Like we have a book club with some reps, which is really nice. And it really allows us to pull in other vendors in the mix as well. I'm not sure if that's advice, but I think that's a start and we'll have to see how it goes, but it is hard, <laughs> really hard. And it's hard for us. Like we we want to, but deadlines and projects and clients, and there's just a lot of things. I feel like we're still in this interim of figuring it out, and the only way we're going to figure it out is if we try all these different things. And I don't think there's one response. I think it's going to be a multitude of things. What are they? I don't know. It's tough finding the balance from our work and our deadlines and then be in the know and up to date on all the new products out there. 
This goes back to the what was different in 2016 versus 2022. We're lacking these personal relationships at the end of the day. I think it's easy to hide behind your screens. And that really hinders us in a ton of different ways. It hinders the relationships that we have between our vendors and ourselves. It hinders just our understanding of product knowledge versus actually physically touching something versus ordering it online. So it's more kind of in the general topic of the relationship between designers and vendors more than anything. I think this is a designer problem in terms of getting out there and doing group events more than anything because I've had multiple vendors reach out to me and say, no one's answering me. No one wants to do anything in person. And so it's not necessarily all on the vendors at the end of the day. It's the conjunction in between that we need to work in tandem. The reps are doing a really good job in general about reaching out and seeing what's next. They do digital presentations. People are multitasking. I'm totally guilty of doing that. But it was just the way in which everything switched to digitally so quickly that we all got into this really bad habit of just multitasking every single time that we're on a call even. We're doing other project work for another client because we're trying to get another client and we're trying to make money at the end of the day. That comes down to the culture and that starts from the top. If the top isn't recommending that we are starting to do things in person and all of that, there's no start to it. This next year is that weird transition time where we're almost there, but we're not fully there in terms of being able to start rehoning on all these relationships in person. I'm personally trying to really go back to that tangible that I've been talking about. Where's the right in between? Because right now I'm feeling the disconnect of trying to get out of that digital world and it's really tough too. Um, So maybe in six months I might have an answer for you, but I don't have it for you today. I hope what you heard is that we're still in a transition period. Now, ThinkLab has a lot of insights that can help. In our playbook that's titled 100 Ideas to Revolutionize the B2B Sale, we invite your reps, and in some cases your marketing team, to start with our ideas, build on them with your own ideas, and adopt what we call a beta test mindset of testing, reframing, and trying again. But in the meantime, Let's explore what we can do digitally, since we know that according to ThinkLab data, even pre-pandemic, 95% of specifiers started their search online. So this leads us to insight number two, their biggest issue with websites and how you can make yours better. While you heard the struggle between brands and human reps in the last section, what I hope you'll hear in this section is their passion for interface with technology. If they can't find what they need easily, they move on. Okay, this is more of a technical one, but I will always say for any manufacturer, Revit models, because that is something that takes a lot of time. We're becoming more digital in the way that we design and we want our clients to be able to visualize what the project will look like. And it's pretty crazy. A few projects were recently completed by our team and they look so identical to the renders. And so that bridge is starting to fall apart between the real and the unreal. And so I think the challenge is getting everyone on board with that, especially when it seems like such an add on. I would say that if it isn't able to be represented in the same way as another manufacturer might have represented it, you run into the problem of the client maybe not appreciating the beauty of the furniture. I'll give you an example. I recently had to pull myself a piece of furniture that was made by someone else for the sake of the rendering. See, I love that product so much and I was trying to do it justice, but there was just something about my lack of knowledge about that particular construction of the piece that didn't sell it for the client. And it's a shame. At the end of the day, I really wanted to include that product. Some websites that are just easy, you could download the photos. It's not like a web file. It's just really clear photos used for renderings. We do in-house 3D rendering. And if I can't find the piece online, we won't just choose because of that. But in the end of the day, if you're a company that has 3D renderings, It's extremely helpful for us and for like our time. So that that's big. 
some websites are like really easy. One thing that was implemented that like for a really long time I felt was necessary was Material Bank. Material Bank is saving grace. You can order things, they're there the next day and like you're getting an array of things from so many different vendors. A couple of years before it was created, I would have told you that was the thing that we really need. Yeah, I, for those like pricing, those in, important information, I know they don't want to reveal it, but maybe if they can all do a kind of like a passcode or something so we can see it because waiting for them to get back to us is really hard and takes time and sometimes they don't want to do that. So even you, if you don't want your competitor to see, maybe if we can register by office email, maybe then that would help because it just takes too long and all the project is like it's really important about the pricing, the lead time, all those kind of information. So maybe that could help. The next couple of quotes talk about the worst website experiences. Now we purposefully ask them not to say the name of the vendor or we cut it out of this recording. <laughs> but to help this sink in, as you listen, I want you to cringe. Imagine that they're talking about your brand. And then, of course, test your website to make sure that that isn't true. It's like a maze where I have to click in so many different layers to get the specification sheet, which I always need. The sizing, the color option. And the one thing that really bothered me or cost a lot of time for me to figure it out is the materials, color that is showcased on the website does not match the samples that we get. So that has always been a problem for me and I will have to always order a booklet just in case last minute. Sometimes you have to go to a huge library with all of their products and within that you have to find the product and you don't even know once you download it whether you're getting the one with casters or the one with metal base versus a wood base. You have no idea what you're getting and it's like uh no. <laughs> Make that simple. Even though sometimes it's really nice to have a lot Sometimes there's too much. It's like going through Wayfair. Like, how can one ever go through all the sofas on Wayfair? They all look the same, but they're different companies. Sometimes too much is not good. So cut to the good stuff. All right. Unfortunately, this is where I have to pause us and say that to get the rest of this episode, you must be a ThinkLab insider. So click on the link in the show notes to learn how you can become a ThinkLab insider and hear more of this episode and more, including insights like number three, the best way you can inspire them with your product today. Number four, what they need from a rep today. Number five, a big opportunity for leading brands to go above and beyond and really get noticed by this generation. Per our 2023 keynote, Ryan Jenkins, who you heard on a previous episode of Design Nerds Anonymous about connecting with the next generation of designer. One of the best ways to get unstuck and spot blind spots that every industry and every organization has is to lean into the emerging generations because they have a fresh perspective that is key to what the next approach should be. So we hope you'll stay with us here or through our insider program and follow along as we explore Gen Z as an arrow to our future in 2023 and beyond. Design Nerds Anonymous is a proud member of the Surround Podcast Network. Discover more shows from Surround at surroundpodcast.com. This episode of Design Nerds Anonymous was produced and edited by Sandow Design. Special thanks to the podcast production team, Hannah Vitti, Wise Grisette, and Samantha Sager. 